Welcome, everyone. My name is Nichelle Anderson. I am your host for my podcast show, Nichelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond. Thank you so much for joining me for another week in my season two of 2018 2019. Well, and this week today, this will be published November the 26th, that's to go, 2018, titled My Director Clip Notes. And it will focus on episodes 32 and 33. And I'm glad that I'm on track to to get these out to you quicker and to kind of be in the same line that you just experienced by having that particular episode released. And I get to talk about it sooner. Last year was my first year and I just kind of thought about doing that. So I started later on. So now, and in this, in my director clip notes, like I said before, these are some good ones you need to always download play it share it what have you because I'm always revealing something because it's really just an off script type discussing of how I came about writing that particular episode and what are some background information that I want to share or some future information for the most part I do always release some type of nuggets but just to get started with today's week let me get my normal introduction welcome things I want to say out if you're just joining me like I said this is my podcast show it's a premium podcast meaning that for the most part of the season I do release clip notes and you can find a link to my patreon page if you want to become a member where you can get the full short story some of that information or that that content that is for a patron member I'm not really revealing yet in the public so in order to know you have to become a patron member you get the full short story some of that information or some of that um, those stories like I said you have to actually get access to that and I don't you know reveal that even in my free episodes or when I give you the complete short story I still don't reveal some of that information it won't be revealed so it's a good way to kind of get all of it (laughs) and you can catch a, a deeper meaning when I'm talking about this or that it will connect back to what I shared and I'm the premium part of my podcast so Mole is basically based on my book Mitzrayam it's a memoir it's now a theatrical production it is in the phase for the return of the prestige days of Mole and when I announce that I'll let you know so let's go ahead and get started with today's episode we are going to highlight episode 32 okay which was entitled with moments of love in Mitzrayam and then episode 33 that was entitled truth stands tall amongst falsehood of thee and I also want to just move on in a sense of we will get to take a look at those two episodes and get the background story on that now the recap from last week was episode 37 it was entitled it was episode 38 it was entitled King Milan Rise to a Kun Rule so this is the second Second ceremony process that King Milan is a part of as he takes his officially return back on the world stage. It just came to me that um, this would be the next part of focusing on. I mean, they would they would turn back, which we're going to talk about in this episode, referring to my director's clip notes. By now, you already got that episode that they came back and you know it was more public return, official greeting from everybody, and this particular one that I did last week was more of a private who's who in society and it was more of a ceremony type return and the Akun, once I do that directed clip notes I would go in detail of what that means but you definitely get the idea that it's something very of course spiritual very in the lineage of his family and that connect him to other elements that define what we know Egypt history to be okay I'm going to leave it like that. And let's begin for this week of my season two podcast show, Nichelle Anderson, Short Stories and Beyond. For this week, I'm focusing on my director clip notes, episode 32 to 33. So by doing that, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one, episode 32 with Moments of Love. And that was published on September the 17, 2018. I like that. And I kind of also in that episode, before I started it, I kind of talked about the the whole theme of the production the for my book into a theatrical production was stage. And I entitled Moments of Love in Ancient Egypt. And I wanted to 
focus on that when I did this episode, episode 32, that this year I want to kind of put more focusing effort on the, the relationship between two people and how they love one another in honor. I guess I want to focus on the healthy aspect of it. <laughs> we don't get to see that a lot. And heck, I want to be able to contribute to put something in the bucket in there that it's a good thing when you talk about true love, true respect for somebody else. And that's basically what that episode is. And the whole po- theatrical production of Moments of Love in Ancient Egypt gives a good reminiscence of it when we start talking about from the book timeline when Princess Amelia would be on the scene and she falls in love and, and all of that. And that's basically what this episode is about. So let's go through it, get some pointers of what was said, get to some elements of what some things were said to clarify here for you. All right, so in this particular scene, Queen Hagan, Queen Milan, this is the next moment, the next page, I should say, from the last finale episode of my season one, Bounty Feed is the Amongst the Mentorine King, episode 29. So in this particular episode, you get a lot of good lines between, between Queen Hagar and King Milan. One in particular line that I like where they was just sharing and experiencing and loving their experience together, that moment. Now, in my book, if I haven't already said it before, that the first page I wrote is about this palace that they're at, which is outside the skirts of Mitzrayam. It's called the Shamaz. And that's in my book where the first page I'm talking, describing that where Princess Amina is riding with Nahara. And again, remember, Nahara is the son of Ezra. Ezra was the high herbalist scientist of Mitzrayam. And they're about the same age. And Nahara takes Princess Amiya to this Shamaz palace. This is the palace where King Milan and where King Milan and Queen Hagal decides to go to before they make their official return to Mitzrayam. They're enjoying each other, what have you, the company, not having so many people around, just in the love of being with the one that you love. Good lines that I like that reinforce the whole aspect of my theatrical production for my book that we have Mole, Moments of Love in Ancient Egypt. And one of those is where Milan can said, and the dawn has spoken to move forward with the anew from us. So it's talking about, you know, the new, the baby that's coming, right? And again, I said earlier, Queen Haga was in her first trimester. When I first started this podcast last year in the first episode entitled Before the Time of Princess Samia, I didn't realize she was pregnant until she, to the second episode, second or third episode, and we realized she was going to go see King Milan, and that's how I found out as well as you, that King Milan got hurt. So he had men- so he says that in this episode, 32, with Moments of Love in Ancient Egypt. And he says that. And so here we go with that one. And then there are some other things too. So this one is just a way to kind of highlight how you can have like a good relationship where you trust one another. There's integrity, there's honesty. And of course, that represents what love is. And they're really connecting. And then suddenly, Queen Hagar pulls away. And this is important because we, I said it earlier, but this is where you're going to really know more information of Queen Hagar and King Milan uh, past when they grew up and when they finally met. And so King Milan asks, what's going on? I feel like something is on your mind. He says, what has now entered your mind to step back from this moment? And Queen Hagar, she turns around and she basically said, it is ruling. And by saying that, that's when he stared back at his queen for for many moments before he looked outward towards the horizon, which is the pyramids. And that's when he said, I know you've seen him many ask you before the outbreak of the many battles to the war with General Tuncan on the behalf of Mitzrayam. For those against my authority in the region, it was for me. So in that aspect, you get to uh, the feeling that he... He knows Queen Hagar wanted to help him. And this was the time way before the war, of course. And it's also to kind of reinforce that he already suspects Rulin still have feelings for her. And that's probably why he's hesitant of helping them. Because he came back and he said later, into his heart of you, still. And basically that just means he still, of course, you know, got love for you. And he don't want to do what's right. And so they kind of have another 
a couple more words to say to one another. And this is the line I really like. And Kima line basically said, I will always love you. Your life there in that time was just a moment leading to the now. And that's a very good line, I have to say, because it reinforces to me that whatever happened in the past, this is what's this is what's real now. And this is what's going forward. And either that person is accepted or not, I'm secure in that. I'm content with that. Because I know what the destiny is to be. And so that re- reinforces their bond. Okay. And then Queen Hagar, of course, said, oh, Shay, you know. And uh, she also mentioned that it seems that the meeting with Taipei, my father with Wulin, might. Da, da, da. So it definitely seems that uh, he's aware that, of course, that Tahib is going to go see Wulin, but not the fact that she brought up previously that she actually saw him you know with General Tonkan to try to see if she can do it to get the information from him and it, it did not she did not get that and that was a previous episode you have to go back and check that I'm trying to scan my notes here when it was when Queen Hagar remembers moments of before and I'm just trying to scan yeah it's episode uh, 26 published on May the 7th Queen Hagar remembers moments up before. That was a very popular um, episode too. You got to go back and check. All right. So that's pretty much what was going on in this episode. I really liked it. It really was carefree. It wasn't too much drama, but it was a nice and it exposed some other things. So I definitely want to reinforce that Lulin is something. He's another element in this that goes deep in the sense of all of these tribal leaders want to rise up against King Milan. The question is who? And soon you're going to know those tribal leaders. And Rulin has a history with Queen Hagar. And you will find out more about that. Now when and how and how much, I'm not sure, but you will. All right, let's go ahead and jump. So that's a good episode to check out. Let's go and move to episode 33. It's entitled, Truth Stand Tall Amongst Falsehood of Thee. In this particular episode, it was published on September the 24th. And this is where we get the what happened to two, where this is the episode. And it shows that he moved towards the south of the Sudan. And again, the Sudan, when I'm referencing this in ancient times, we call that the continent of Africa. Anyway, so he moved to the south and he's living well. I mean, he's like he's in some type of similar to a palace like, maybe not quite like a palace, but he's living large and he have his trusted guards with him and he's deep in the south. So he's hidden. He's not really out and boldly and he's feeling very good about himself. Word reached him that King Milan got rid of Echo and that was the goal. Um, there's an episode that I did in my season two on um, Betrayal is Among Thee. You gotta go check that one out too. And that's when the two paired up and gave information to high council members of Congeto and with the near the land of what we call now the Congo. And Natu provided that information so they can go do the dirty work pretty much. And so in this episode, you see that he coming about himself. I'm not sure the whole plan, but at the end of the day, he wants the, he wanted the position of Echo. And old school or what have you, he loves to be of authority and the leader and respect it. So something happened, maybe a previous war in the Orions. I'm not sure that he lost that respect. And he want that respect back as his experiences in the military. That's why he always butt heads or he was butting heads conflict with Comrade Dita before Comrade Dita became a general. If you go check out episode two of season one, okay? And so he says this remark, Natu spoke first to one of his high, his uh, trusted guards. He said, new movement is in the south of the Sudan. We will wait until Kingo to signal a position forth. Another thing, when I say Kingo, I'm talking about the moon. So those are the shadow hours. So that's when, of course, you know, that's the coming new day. It's nighttime. And then, of course, when I say Apsu, they have several meanings based on based on the context. It could mean the day. It could mean the sun. It could mean the beam of light. When I use the word Apsu, so that's something I want to kind of share with you. So that's what he said. And one of the guards I said in this particular. Episode, 
episode, you know, a little concerned. You know, what do you mean new movement? Okay, we just moved. <laughs> and uh, he says to Natu, he says, well, we should move one step behind Absu days forward. The tribal leaders of the South are a different cycle of old and new. So, again, it is these these tribal leaders that you have to kind of connect with to find who was following who, who was supporting who and what and how. And But now it seems that he's in the South. He's dealing with a, a, a different matrix of people and their needs and desires as he try to mobilize. That's what it seems like he's doing. He's basically mobilizing a new force that since Echo was pushed down, he can rise up. Now, in the first episode returning back for this season, it is of the Iran and that's when Leko went to go tell her knee. Okay, the superior over Echo and them. So I'm not sure how that's going to fall out. But for right now, Natu was trying to get his forces and his foundation set up. Because King Milan wiped out Echo and his reign and his people that he had and resources. So Natu responded back to that God to say, I have a way. Now, what that would be, I'm not sure. But that's what Natu says. So we fast forward in that if you got to where Natu was feeling great, he's feeling, you know, he got it going on. He got everything going his way. Everything's going to be focused on King Milan. He's not going to be identified. He's thinking he's in. You know, he got a straight shot to get this in the end goal. But suddenly he felt something. You, know, you get that feeling that something just happened. He don't know what it is. He just feel all of a sudden uneasy standing in his enclave, right, of where he was at. And suddenly he could hear footsteps coming. And I expressed that it was like a, it was a secret spy. It was in a disguise of an ordinary village woman or what have you. But she seemed to be connected to one of the tribal leaders, Oteen. Oteen is very important. He's going to keep coming up. And he came about in the episode, I believe, I think episode eight. And in that particular episode, he was the one that gave Natu the first um, part of a to, to advance. Yeah, it was episode eight entitled In a Moment, A New Path is Revealed. And Oteen is spelled O E T E N. And he, the one, gave him something that we still don't know, but whatever it is, is connected to Mitzrayam. That remember, Echo told Natu, no, we can't use that as a way to bring down King Milan or have him under our control. It would lead, you know, or to show that at that time King Milan wasn't officially back, or to show it would get to Queen Hagar and it will show us and then Natu wasn't with it and that's when he went to go betray them and went to the the council members of the Kangeto and so Oteen this is his daughter what have you someone from that tribal area and gives him a message that something was in it because when he read it everything seems to stop and the lady left or what have you and after she said it is for you the man from Orion is it so she was asking beaming making sure that was him I guess the code word and of course he said it was and that's when she gave him the message he read it and he was very disturbed by that and in that particular one he said one of his guards said what is your command because he could sense the concern on the two face he was just happy and then that's when the two pausing at first but he responded and he just said close out the eastern end of the border with a king tribe as a support for followers of Apsu will rise soon so that's the takeaway from that for followers of Apsu will rise soon and of course when I say Apsu I'm talking about the sun or when I say the word dawn all that means the same um, so the followers of Apsu you haven't really got the access to know what that is I haven't revealed that yet but it definitely give you an indication that there's a change and somebody's coming you know I'm not sure if it's going to be Lanko because remember in the previous episode or you will get the episode soon Lanko has his return back to Tamat based on the orders from Hani you want to find out about him just check out the first episode of my return episode 30 here in season 2 and that's what he said I'm going to repeat that line he said close out the eastern end of the border with a king tribe as a support for followers of Apsu will rise soon. 
And so somebody is coming and we got to find out who. And it seemed like it could be an opposition or maybe a supporter. He said close out. That's pretty much somebody trying to get him. And he needs to be able to, to stay ahead of the game. Now, since yeah, this is a point you need to take away. Since she was a spy, she's coming from the west part of the Sedan. And it could be there's another element. Could it be some members of uh, Following Echo that got together that wasn't in that cave that survived? And now they had served in their own his tale, too, because they knew he was the part of it, of Echo Takedown, that they're coming for him? We don't know, but you're going to find out soon, I guess. This is how it's going to roll. And that's when the guard said, okay, you're rich, and he's going to go do that. So you will go forward to get more information of that. This this right here was another week where I was, was releasing the full episode. So please go and check out these episodes out and my future ones. Please as well subscribe to this podcast. Thank you so much for your support. I share it with someone and you have a good one. Thank you.